Cambodian cuisine has a diverse list of delicious dishes. The country itself has a very generous climate, land, and bodies of water that spawned a wide array of plants and animals that are absolutely phenomenal in the kitchen. However, Cambodian cuisine itself was stunted after a series of massive social political crises such as civil wars, starvation, and the refugee crisis during the 70s and 80s. It was capped by the rise of the Khmer Rouge, which severely destroyed Cambodia's rice production by 84%, causing one of the deadliest famines in contemporary history. Much of Cambodia's culinary history was buried in obscurity, and its people resorted to more accessible food sources that some people may frown upon. However, these alternative meals eventually became one of the core identities of the food traditions. Today, we're going to have a look at Cambodia's five eccentric delicacies. In the province of Kampong Cham in Cambodia, there is a certain delicacy that will surely challenge even the bravest eaters. Coming in number one on our list is none other than the fried tarantula. When we think of fried stuff, we think first of fried chicken, fried pork chops, fried potatoes, fried catfish. Spiders would be the last thing that comes in our minds to fry. Well, I'm out, man. But don't shut it out just yet. While some of us feel chills at the thought of eating these fried creepers, it is actually somewhat a popular food to eat in Cambodia and a challenge for foreign eaters. Fried tarantula is a regional vending snack in the town of Skuon in the district of Chung Pre in the Kampong Cham province. Spiders are commonly found all around Cambodia, but the center of its fame is in Skuon, a market town 75 kilometers away from Phnom Penh, the country's capital city where this delight is also sold. There is no clear history on how the practice of tarantula frying came to existence, although records show that it is not a new practice. However, the reign of terror under the Khmer Rouge made food production a pain in the back, so Cambodians needed other source to fend off their hunger. As time went by, what used to be a food for desperation grew to be a delicacy, eaten by almost Cambodians on a regular basis and as a form of baptism for the arriving tourists. The species of spiders used in this delicacy are tarantulas known as aping in Khmer, with a size as big as a human palm. Why are you running? Why are you running? These tarantulas are usually found in the forest and can be foraged or bred in holes in the ground. These ground holes are typically located in villages north of Skuon, where the tarantulas are gathered in considerable amounts for the walk. There is no fancy stuff in cooking this dish. The tarantulas are simply boiled in salted water and then fried in hot oil until the legs are completely stiff and the abdomen no longer squishy. If you are feeling a little bit extra, you can also enhance the oil by frying some garlic on it first. And the spiders are tossed in a mixture of MSG, sugar, and salt before frying. Fried tarantulas have a strange flavor combination. Its taste was described as having a taste crossing between chicken and cod. There is little flesh in the tarantula leg and has a crispy texture. On the other hand, the body and the head contains something that is described as delicate white meat. The real challenge, however, lies in the tarantula's stomach. Even the most eccentric connoisseurs caved into submission while eating this part of the spider. The tarantula's abdomen contains a brown paste composed of its organs. No, God! It has a bitter and sour flavor, which some eaters consider to be an acquired taste. Yum! Let's take a little breather for the second spot on our list. It's not as bizarre as fried tarantulas, but still a contender on some of the stranger delights on our exotic food picks. 
Coming in second in our list is the snakehead fish, a type of fish with a head that, well, looks like it belongs to a snake. I'm so damn confused. <laughs> The Mekong River has a large community of various fishes and other water creatures, and the snakehead can be one of the most bizarre of them all. Snakehead fish belongs to a fish family named Chanidae, a classification of persiform fish or fish with ray-shaped fins. It mainly thrives in fresh water and has little to no tolerance for salt water. This fish has traces of its evolutionary journey. A snakehead possesses what is called a suprabranchial organ, a primitive respiratory system that helps this bad boy to breathe and survive out of the water as long as four days during the migrating periods if they get the proper moisture. <laughs> Snakeheads would earn their infamy as an invasive species because they tend to eat aquatic insects, planktons, mollusks, carp, and frogs. Because of this, snakeheads are considered pests for causing an ecological imbalance. Therefore, snakehead fish became a regular guest in Cambodian kitchens. If you get the gist. Money. The meat of the snakehead fish is a beloved part of Cambodian cuisine. It has a meat that is slightly firmer compared to a tilapia and also mild in flavor with no fishy aftertaste. This makes the snake head a well sought ingredient in various kitchens in and out of the country. Snake head meat is a typical ingredient in fish amok, one of the most remarkable and traditional Cambodian dishes. It can also be grilled, roasted, cooked in a soup, or even turned into a prahok, which is Cambodia's version of salted and fermented fish. Snake head fish is a versatile delicacy, and a reminder, that exotic does not necessarily mean rose. Coming in third on our list is another challenging Cambodian dish that you just need to try at least once in your life. Crickets. Eating insects is a very unusual thing to think of for Westerners, but is actually a common delicacy in Asia. In our previous food journey in South Korea, we featured silkworm in cups as a street food. And Filipinos in Pampanga made quick work of the kamaru, pestering their rice patties by turning them into adobo. Eating crickets share the same origin story as with the fried tarantula up on our list. Khmer Rouge tyrannically ruled in the 1970s left the country in ruins, and families living in the rural villages had to fend themselves against starvation. Crickets are abundant in the forest and were foraged for food. In a strange twist of fate, crickets would turn out to be higher in protein content compared with conventional sources of meat. Aside from that, crickets are also packed with micronutrients such as iron, vitamin B12, magnesium, zinc, and calcium. It is the gold mine of healthy living. Crickets are either fried and roasted, topped with chicken chilies and spring onions for garnish and extra flavor. It is sold as a snack in wet markets. However, this crispy and bizarre delight can also be found in some Cambodian nightclubs, eaten as a finger food and paired with iced beer and other liquors. Fried crickets are displayed side by side with other strange Cambodian street food such as fried tarantulas and frogs, which is the next one on our list. Coming in number 4 on our list is a delicacy that is although already a normalized dish globally, may still be off-putting for some people. Frogs Jumpy, bulky, and loves to eat insects in its free time, frogs surely need no introduction. Famous in China, Singapore, Malaysia, and developing a growing fan base in America, Cambodians also love their frogs. Eating frog meat is not a new thing in Cambodia. There are no documents referring to such practices in the country, but there were stone carvings of frogs in the Angkor Wat, arguably one of Cambodia's most recognizable landmarks. It is said that eating frogs even predated the Angkor period, remaining a delicacy throughout Cambodia's troubled history and towards the renaissance of its food culture. 
There are various ways of cooking frogs in Cambodia. While Western cuisine prefers to use the legs alone in their frog dishes, Cambodian cooks prefer to use the entire body in their menu. The easiest way to cook frog is simply by grilling it. The skin is first removed and the organs taken out. It is then grilled over live coals and eaten straight with a set of typical sauces and condiments to pair. You can also dip the frog in batter and deep fry it, just like a classic finger licking good fried chicken. Or if you want to take it to another level, you can stuff the frog with minced pork and Krug spice paste and grill it over live charcoal. Frog meat tastes like chicken, but bonier and smaller, so you want to order an entire platter to fully savor the experience. Coming in the last spot on our list is the best way to cap off our exotic Cambodian food pick, snake. Snake is growing its popularity as a delicacy in various cuisines around the world. In fact, there are restaurants in Southeast Asia turning this slippery creature into a multi-course meal such as deep-fried, soup, stir-fry, or in its piece the resistance, which is the heart, underneath a glass of liquor and chugged down simply. <laughs> Eating snakes can still be off-putting for some people, and it is understandably nope. so. After all, Snakes wouldn't be the first option we can think of when we are in the mood to eat meat. Cambodians have a simpler and straightforward way of cooking snakes, skewering and grilling it over red-hot charcoal. The snakes are first skinned off and cleaned, then it can be marinated in some special sauces or placed directly on the grill. But before the grilling process, the snakes needs to be properly skewered first on wooden barbecue sticks. The snake will be grilled until it is charred and it can be eaten with spicy sauces. Just like frog meat, snake meat tastes like chicken but bonier. It's like eating the neck of the chicken so it's truly a game of patience and luck. One must put to mind that what is weird for us may be normal for others, and we can say the same for the skewer delight and the other delicacy in this list. Thanks again for tuning in with us here today at Foodie Legends for our latest episode. I hope you enjoyed this video and got a nice taste of exotic dishes that Cambodia has to offer. Before you go, be sure to like this video and click the subscribe button for more delicious content every week. We'd love to hear your thoughts too so leave a comment below to let us know what your favorite part of the video was or if you want to just leave us with a few thoughts. You guys are awesome. Thanks again for watching. See you on the next one.